What's going on everyone? Nick or Catalyst here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing well. So originally this video was going to be a long video dissecting everything that Battlefield 5 did wrong over its life cycle. But the more I worked on the video, the more I realized that there were just way too many mistakes to keep the video at a reasonable length. And the mountain of blunders was almost comical, so instead I made this video. I know I definitely missed some things, and I'm going to try and go chapter by chapter. I may bounce around a little bit, but I know it's different from my normal content, so I thought I would make this disclaimer. But either way, I hope you enjoy it. Here is every mistake DICE made with Battlefield 5. I do love that fans on Twitter are actually changing the Vs in their profiles for this game, something my mother did many years ago ahead of the curve. And most people don't know this, but the V in my name is actually a five. Yeah, my name is actually pronounced Trev5 or Noah. <sighs> Trevor Noah. Dice revealing that the game was a World War II game and then releasing a two and a half minute trailer that looked more like a Lady Gaga music video than it did a World War II Battlefield game. Dice indirectly inspiring the playstyle of 60% of the player base within the first two minutes of the game's reveal. Dice perfectly recreating an encounter I had with my uncle when I was just 13. Yes, including the part where Alloy from Horizon Zero Dawn smacks my uncle Randy with a barbed wire bat. I'm not sure how Dice was able to access these memories, but I assume it happened while Trevor Noah was busy making me fall asleep. Dice accidentally releasing a screenshot for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Calling your player base uneducated. Openly telling players not to buy your game. How stupid can you fucking be? Deluxe Edition owners of the game getting completely scammed, not only not getting advertised skins, challenges, and extra weekly drops, but they also got to play one of the worst FPS in gaming history two days early. Seriously, this is one of the biggest bundle scams I've ever seen. DICE openly mocking player backlash at a launch party about their very clearly politically charged game with the hashtag Everyone's Battlefield. Also, I'm not sure why you should be celebrating about releasing a broken mess of a game. I realize that it must have taken a lot of hard time and work and a lot of crunch, but just like failing a test you studied all night for, I wouldn't exactly be in the mood for celebrating. Who knows, maybe they were celebrating the death of the franchise. War Stories being an average, liberty-taking, single-player experience in which DICE expects us to speed date and get attached to characters that we know for 30 minutes or less, and half of that time we're mindlessly shooting their brainless AI anyway. Also, apparently they thought we would like these undercooked stories, so they set plans in motion to make a multiplayer map out of the cheesiest one. Also, also, the fact that the best war story was released as DLC a few weeks after launch, along with the tank skin that you had to earn in the new war story, but that skin was so hard to get because the assignment tracking in the game was completely broken. Panzerstorm. Also, DICE adding trees and bushes is covered to make Panzerstorm more playable, but being completely oblivious to the fact that there's absolutely nothing that anybody can do about seven panzers sniping you while you're crossing an open field. The testing range being a generally worthless buggy mess. DICE announcing they were delaying tank customization, one of the most requested features since launch, even more so than it was already delayed. Little did we know that a delay meant an entire year of waiting. Battlefield 5's very prevalent obsession with gas masks in a war in which gas was actually banned. I'm not one of those big historical accuracy reddit droolers, but even I can admit there's way too many gas masks in this damn game. The Tides of War drifting in content like it's a well in the middle of the Rubakali Desert. Tides of War was done so poorly that players actually wished there was a paid premium pass almost immediately after launch. Also, Tides of War challenges being generally boring as fuck. I get that they can't be too hard, but I don't find building 10 fortifications a challenge, DICE. Also, also, the fact that with Tides of War, DICE was always going to be disappointing somebody with their weekly content drop. Sometimes you would get a week where you got a weapon like the ZK, and other weeks you got an uncommon drilling skin that looked like it was drawn by a developer's four-year-old. Point being, if you didn't like what was in the Tides of War, you were extremely bored with the content and this could go on for weeks, exposing how bad the Tides of War system actually was. DICE attempting to change the time to kill nearly a month after launch despite players agreeing that the gunplay in Battlefield 5 was the best thing about it. Also, another example of DICE being completely oblivious to outside perception, tearing more of a rift between them and the community, creating a negative reaction that most definitely scared away new players, which were who DICE were catering to with these time to kill changes in the first place. Just in case there were people that weren't totally confused by the time to kill changes, DICE decides to make a Conquest core playlist with the old time to kill to absolutely guarantee that nobody will have a flying fuck as to what these changes are and why they're doing them. Man, it's a really good thing that they didn't try to change the time to kill again after this. Also, DICE teasing Hardcore like a dollar bill on a fishing hook to Hardcore players, only to yank the line when they try and grab it. Company coin not accumulating properly for the first five months of the game, which despite being a valid issue at the time, is hilarious now when you think about how company coin is practically worthless after you finish your progression, and you soon would be able to just purchase stuff with points. You know, if you really wanted that 33rd gas mask head skin DICE just put in the game. 
The boys AT rifle, just in case the game wasn't casual enough, let's add a skillless one-shot elephant rifle that promotes bipoding and camping. The player base having a fetish for lying down prone in corners with boys ATs and bipoded MMGs, cause why get gun skill when you can just cheese people while lying down when they can't see you? Combined arms. Dice thinking that copying and pasting missions across the same multiplayer maps we've been playing for three months already is a good co-op mode. Seriously, not to harp on this again, but holy shit. Combined Arms was an abomination. If you ask players today about Combined Arms, I guarantee you that 90% of them would forget that it even exists. Also, challenges and assignments can be tracked and completed in Combined Arms, completely removing any difficulty or even any surprise for mastery and Tides of War challenges. Also, also, new Combined Arms missions were scheduled to be released in April according to the Chapter 3 roadmap. I honestly can't tell you if they actually came into the game or not, so I'm just going to go with the most likely conclusion and assume that this was cancelled, because of course it was. Probably for the better. The artillery strike call in that's main job is to annoy the living hell out of me and my teammates and shake my screen, which shakes a metric fuck ton even with my camera shake settings at the lowest it can go. Glass door reviews go viral that absolutely blast dice for being a horrible work environment, which leads to other ex-developers giving testimonies that include the information that some direct feedback is not delivered to developers for fear that it may, and I quote, hurt their feelings. Dice going back on their promises that everything in the game would be available for purchase with company coin by locking the best weapon skins, soldier cosmetics, and elite skins behind a paywall, because EA wanted to remind you that they published this game and it's time for you to give them your allowance for the month, so pay up, Timmy goddammit! Firestorm, not the mode itself, because admittedly, Firestorm was a fairly decent addition to the game, but the lack of support the game mode got from DICE, which not only made Firestorm become a wasteland of teamers and proning bush rookies, but also made it a gigantic waste of time and resources. Also, the fact that the game mode died so quickly that people could get into the same game of solos with friends and team up with them, with literal ease, I was able to do it myself just mere weeks after Firestorm launched. DICE thinking watchtowers are an interesting and sufficient addition to a battle royale map. That's like Epic Games adding a tall hill to Fortnite and being like, here you go, have fun! The looting system being so bad that it made the streamers EA pay to play Firestorm rage quick back to other, better battle royales in three days. Firestorm not being free to play and being locked behind a paywall, because EA can't release two free battle royales on the same financial quarter now can they? Chapter 4 of Tides of War being named to find the odds, but DICE somehow managed to make the game even worse at every single turn. DICE fucking up hit detection and actually making me miss getting one framed. DICE channeling their inner predator by making people invisible. Makes sense considering they based an entire easter egg off this glitch two chapters later. Fortress. Fortress again. Honestly, might as well make it a threefer for Fortress, cause I don't know what big brain gameplay designer thought it was a brilliant idea to have an entire team of 32 spawn in at the top of Hamada and give them bombers, stationary weapons, and height advantage, and then spawn the other team of 32 in the middle of fucking nowhere and expect the attacking team to have even the slightest bit of fun or chance at winning. If they were measuring balance on a scale, some fat chick from my 600 pound life stepped on the scale and just broke it. House and Dan. Alsun Dan being half released and broken, and the rest of the map being delayed for three months only for the community to find out that it's potentially the worst map in Battlefield history. Dice being lazy pieces of shit and porting over a single player map to multiplayer instead of having any ounce of creativity and designing a fun map from scratch. Alsun Dan just generally being a stuttery and boring mess. Dice removing front lines and domination because they have data that suggests they aren't as popular, when in reality they were two of the most playable game modes in the entire game. Also, despite removing Frontlines and Domination, DICE kept the UI in the game just to add some additional confusion. Also, also, DICE willingly removing game modes from a game at which, at the time, its biggest issue was lack of content. Also, 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 DICE not recognizing that their data that suggested that Frontlines and Domination weren't as popular might be skewed because the Tides of War challenges funnel players into certain game modes, some of them limited time game modes. Limited time game modes. Oh, you're having fun? Haha, <laughs> sorry, you won't be seeing this game mode for two more months. Fuck you, you uneducated fucks. The Fantastic Bombastic, otherwise known as the Full Throttle Playlist, which contained every single boring map in the entire game. Operation Underground being a poor attempt at fan service and DICE hoping nostalgia brings in players, but in reality it was only fun for the first two weeks before people realized that it was just an average remake. Legitimately half of the content previewed in the Chapter 4 teaser trailer being delayed, cancelled, or withheld from the game. The 5v5 competitive mode being delayed and then cancelled two days before it was supposed to be released. Dice selecting not to put in a team balancer or a team switch feature, leading to some of the most boring one-sided games I've ever played. Dice's total negligence of the cheating problem on PC and lack of anti-cheat, which is so bad it actually bans legitimate players over actual cheaters. Shout out to Baranox. Raising the level cap to 500 all at once instead of slowly increasing the level cap to keep players interested. Also, giving out company coin as a reward for leveling up past certain milestones instead of something more substantial like boins. 
Also, also, Maxique reached rank 500, which as you know is the highest rank in the game, and the most dice could give this man was 8,000 company coin. How about some fucking boings, you stingy assholes? Max has almost 100 days played, that's enough for like 6 goddamn people combined, and the most you can give him is 8,000 company coin? How about a hand-signed letter for the 3 developers that actually give a shit about this game? Give him something, goddammit. The Type 2A. I don't really need to say anything else here. Dice, in the biggest heal move of the decade, decided to change the time to kill again when nobody was asking for it because the Pacific update was actually doing well and Dice recognized that they hadn't done something completely brain dead and stupid in a while and thought this was the best course of action. Also, Dice refusing to fully revert the time to kill despite the entire community booking their flights to Stockholm to raid the Dice offices. Quietly implementing snap aim assist on console after saying you weren't going to put it in multiplayer and then forgetting to put it in the patch notes, which was most likely a complete lie, and then not removing the statement that snap aim assist was only available in single player, causing players to not know if it was actually in the game or not, which made my life as a content creator a living hell with a bunch of mouth breathers bashing me in my comments telling me that I was lying to them. So yeah, fuck you dice, right in your Swedish meatballs. DICE releasing community games after a year of vague misinformation and delays, only to have the rental server program be the most pathetic pile of dog shit excuse of a rental server program I've ever seen. I don't even have a joke for this one. DICE, I seriously hope you step on a pile of Legos and get lemon juice in all your paper cuts. Community games being so bare bones that players can do any of the things they were able to do in previous titles apart from password protect their server and set a map and game mode rotation. The fucking crab rave easter egg. Well, I'm glad DICE was taking the time to make sure their game was in a healthy state before doing this. DICE releasing tank customization after a full year of waiting, only for people to find out that the most they could come up with is a helmet on a side of a turret. Having the absolute gall to have coming soon be a free tank specialization. Also, just because you're acknowledging the meme and are trying to get in on the joke DICE doesn't mean your pathetic excuse of a live service is any less embarrassing. How about a fucking apology instead? Solomon Islands coming out only to be ruined by an overabundance of tanks. Solomon Islands is actually one of the better maps in the game, but DICE has such a lack of faith in the design that they just splooge tanks all over the map, and the way that tanks are balanced in Battlefield 5, it basically ruins it. DICE linking all the good tides of war unlocks to the chapter XP so that players can purchase everything with boins if they want to. EA must be getting a little jealous this is a video about DICE. 10 tier skips in a fucking row. Battlefield 5 essentially being the CTE for Battlefield 5. DICE removing South African servers without warning in the middle of a pandemic when the region was in total lockdown, then only to bring it back a few weeks later for a limited time because now they are suddenly concerned and want people to stay inside. But the reality is, is they are half doing this because they can profit from it, not because they're afraid for people's well-being. Not having the tech to create double XP weekends despite older titles and other DICE properties having the tech to do so. Not being able to have more than a certain amount of game modes in the game at a certain time, because the UI will not work and the game will be unplayable if it passes a certain limit. Did you guys have the janitor design the UI? We are unable to fetch your report, just like we're also unable to fetch good design decisions. The Spitfire VB's rockets doing double the intended damage because air-to-ground combat wasn't already broken enough, now let's ruin air-to-air -air combat too! Fortifications being a totally not obvious capitalization on Fortnite. Also, fortifications finally being a way for worthless players to finally feel like they are contributing by building a sandbag and ditch in the middle of nowhere only to die and have their fortifications be blown up by an assault player. Attrition. Just the entire thing. It's fucking horrible. And of course, all the goddamn bugs. <laughs> if you having girl problems, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. I got the bad control. <laughs>